Hello, good afternoon, everybody. We're going to cover off, obviously, everything about the Portugal uh, Golden Visa this evening, everything that you need to know. Uh, of course, the focus of this evening is uh, to get to, of course, a live Q&A and, of course, give everyone a chance to ask any questions, literally any questions you have around uh, Portugal's Golden Visa programme. And uh, I hope that by the time we finish, uh, yeah, you'll be uh, one hour wiser than what you was before. But yeah, I often get a lot of questions, uh, similar questions, of course, on a one-to-one -one basis. So the webinars help to field some of those common questions uh, in a timely manner. Um, but yeah, we shall, we shall make a start. So yeah, thanks to everyone for joining so far. Great to see some familiar names. And thank you to everyone for submitting your questions uh, already before this evening's event. So I'll make sure we cover off those as well. So quite a lot of those questions I shall naturally cover as we go through the presentation. But uh, yeah, it's an interactive um, interactive session, if you like. It's, uh, it's me generally talking to myself. Um, but hey, that's that's how a webinar works. But if you want to say hello, feel free to do so. You'll find a little chat box and a little Q&A section as well. Uh, so feel free to, uh, to drop in any questions as we go. And yeah, I'll make it as uh, hopefully as, as informative and as helpful as possible and um, before before we finish so yeah we'll get stuck in so uh, for those that are uh, just starting out on their golden visa journey and perhaps haven't logged into any previous webinars just yet my name is jason swan uh, one of the senior partners here at holborn assets and i'm based down in the south of portugal the best part of portugal in my slightly biased opinion in the algarve uh, towards albufeira uh, I head up the both the Europe well the European arm, including Spain and the Portuguese offices for Holborn Assets, who are a global uh, financial planner. Uh, we manage now over three billion dollars between uh, twenty six offices now worldwide. Uh, and as I mentioned, I'm, I'm based here in Portugal. Where I've been for the past few years, and about about six years back, we opened up a new group of Holborn Assets, or a new part of the group, should I say, uh, which is Holborn Passport, which is what we're going to be focusing on. Uh, this evening, uh, which is a service dedicated towards helping our clients achieve residency and citizenship in a country of their choice. Of course, today we're going to talk about Portugal. Um, and yeah, any questions you have around, of course, the visa programs, in particular the Golden Visa, which is the focus, of course, for this evening. Any questions around financial planning? I'm also a fully qualified and, and regulated financial planner here in Portugal. Uh, I spend a lot of my time helping my clients structure their income and their assets uh, both before they move and also when they get to Portugal as well. And of course, I've been here for a few years now. So uh, I like to think I'm a pretty handy guy to ask any questions you have generally about getting ready for moving to Portugal. Uh, for Holborn, uh, the, the Holborn Passport Service, uh, if you're not already aware, is, a, is kind of a one-stop shop for everything that you need to get the new residency and, of course, working towards uh, citizenship. And that includes myself, who you get my company and entertainment throughout the process, but also my team to help with all the different moving parts involved with getting the visa and, of course, moving towards the passport at a later date. Uh, that includes, of course, applying for things like your tax number. Probably the easiest thing of things to do on the list, but tax number all starts with, uh, of course, setting up the Portuguese bank account, which can sometimes be uh, more difficult than it, than it needs to be, but depending on the bank, uh, it doesn't always need to be too difficult. Uh, and of course, we help with the collection of documents. We help with the translation. Uh, Liaising with the biometrics office, with the tax office, with all the, you know, the investment managers, with the, uh, what else we've got? Everyone, everyone that's involved. We are uh, the kind of one point of contact for all that. And we will hopefully make life uh, that much easier and quicker to, of course, get the visa and your passport as well. If you get a chance, please do have a look online, do some research, please type my name into Google, see what comes up. Uh, hopefully not too much uh, bad press on there, but I think overall you'll find uh, a good, uh, great customer's feedback. We've now got over 2000 uh, reviews on Trustpilot and we are the market leader uh, for the Portugal Golden Visa now as well. Uh, it's not, as I mentioned, the only program that we offer. Um, we'll focus on that this evening, but for those that are maybe not set just on Portugal, maybe just thinking about a plan B uh, somewhere in the world, uh, you may wish to get in contact regarding one of our other programs um, following the session this evening. Um, the European programs, they, they, they tend to be the most popular programs by far as Portugal, uh, for a number of reasons which we'll come on to shortly. But also, if you want to set sail for the likes of Spain or Greece or Malta, 
Uh, these are also some pretty exciting and very different programs that you might wish to get involved with as well. Internationally, uh, of course, yeah, many programs to choose from. And uh, yeah, feel free to reach out and we can talk about those uh, on a separate day. But for tonight, we're going to focus on my personal favourite is the Portugal Golden Visa. So we'll start with some basics. Uh, the, the Golden Visa programme is kind of a VIP ticket, if you like, to live, work or just sunbathe in Portugal for as long as you like. Um, it is formerly a two-year visa, and you can renew the visa for every two years for as long as you wish. And both yourself and family members can have rights to live in Portugal. The one part that makes the Golden Visa particularly unique is that there isn't really any minimum stay required to maintain the visa uh, and to get the passport uh, in just five years' time. Um, there's only a minimum stay of two weeks every two years. So in short, you don't actually need to move to Portugal to get the visa uh, or to get a European passport as long as you take a trip to Portugal, uh, like I say, for a couple of weeks each for each two years. That will be plenty. And yeah, five years from now, uh, a little bit longer than five years, but uh, from five years from the application date, we can apply for the European passport, uh, which is then when you're allowed to live in any of the European countries. So that's the kind of... Uh, but the main treasure at the end of the rainbow, if you will. Um, but yeah, for 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 now, the visa program is it's Europe's most popular. Uh, there's now been over 11,000 successful applications submitted for the Golden Visa. Uh, and Holborn, we've now done over 10% of the world's applications for Portugal and maintain a 100% success rate on those applications as well. Uh, so and again, just to clarify on that, the, the, the unique part is that you do not need to move to Portugal. You don't need to move your tax residency to Portugal. Uh, you just need to be here for, like I said, a couple of weeks, every couple of years, and you can look forward to getting that passport for the rest of Europe. And it's the only one, apart from Malta, it's the only visa option where you can get a European passport without having to change your tax residency as well. So in Spain... Just next door also has a golden visa program, but it takes 10 years to get a passport through Spain. And you have to live in Spain for those 10 years to get it. Uh, Greek has a golden visa program as well, very similar. It takes at least seven years, but incredibly difficult to get the passport. And again, consists of living in Greece for that period of time. Uh, Malta. Uh, Malta is a great program. You can actually get a European passport within about 18 months. However, the investment capital required is over double that needed for Portugal, and a part of that comes as a mandatory donation as well to the government. Uh, so all things, yeah, lead to Portugal, and uh, yeah, very much seen as the kind of gateway to Europe for for those reasons. So that's the basics. So now, if you do hold the golden visa, you are treated exactly the same as a Portuguese citizen. Apart from you cannot vote and you cannot run for president, but apart from that, you get all the other perks. So you get access to the healthcare system, which is one of the best healthcare systems in the world. Uh, family gets access to European education as well. And of course, it's not too bad of a place to live um, for, for obvious reasons, including those 300 days of sunshine each year. Not that you could probably tell I see much of the sun by my uh, quite wavering tan. Uh, but nonetheless, yeah, for those that aren't stuck in the office all the time, uh, loads of sunshine and... Um, and yeah, so of course, there's different parts of Portugal to head to. Um, I'm down in the south here in the Algarve. Um, I'm actually getting married in three weeks time, just north of Lisbon, in a town called Estoril, if you're familiar with Estoril, which is around here. Uh, but of course, Lisbon is the, the city centre, uh, as the main hub of Portugal. So, you know, you'd be heading to Lisbon generally for better um, you know, employment opportunities, generally speaking, um, or just a busier life. You know, Lisbon is is alive uh, 12 months of the year, whereas down in the south, you know, it gets it gets pretty quiet, um, you know, outside of the, the, the peak months. Porto up at the top, another popular destination. I like to say a bit of a mix between the two. It's a very picturesque part of Portugal. Not quite as built up as, as a city centre, um, but still an incredible place to live or, you know, to travel to. Uh, and of course, you have the option of living inland Portugal, where you'll typically find property prices uh, a lot cheaper than you'll find on the coast. Um, but yeah, if, if, you, if you're more way inclined to have more space and maybe a bit of privacy and no one around you for miles and miles for ultimate tranquility, then yeah, inland uh, some very 
you know, incredible parts of Portugal with you know a nice view on a riverbed, uh, maybe on some farmland or a winery. You know, take take your pick. Uh, and of course, you have the Portuguese islands as well, like Madeira, uh, which yeah, great place to be. Very easily accessible. You've got the main um, international airport in Lisbon. You've got an international airport in Porto and in Faro as well down in the south. But uh, unlike, you know, countries like the US, it's not a big country, Portugal. You can kind of get to the top, to the bottom in maybe five hours, six hours, depending on how fast that you drive. Transport links are pretty good. The train system, the bus system, uh, taxis are super cheap as well. So, you know, if you like Uber or Bolt, you'll be amazed by how how cheap, uh, you know, taxis are. So, yeah, taxis, generally the go to to, uh, to get around. Uh, so yeah, take your pick. And if you haven't moved into Portugal, obviously one of the benefits of the golden visa is that you don't have to move straight away. Uh, most of my clients are you know, kind of progressing for more of a plan B or maybe for you know a potential move to Portugal in the future or the option for the family to move to Portugal in the future. Not necessarily saying, you know, we're going to go right now. Um, and, and yeah, a lot, a lot of clients just wanting to get a passport, you know, to, like I say, to be able to retire in Europe not necessarily move into Portugal straight away. But however you plan to, 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 to come over to Portugal, if you are going to settle down, uh, always good to kind of find your feet. You know, there's so many different nice areas of Portugal. Uh, I, I always think it's a good idea not to maybe buy, jump in and buy a property straight away because the taxes that you pay on property are quite, are quite heavy uh, and you don't want to kind of buy a place and then want to move to another part of the country just six months later because you've got to pay that tax every time that you move. Um, but yeah, check it out. Check out the main areas, see what, what fits best. I've, I've changed places a few few times before I, I decided to settle uh, in Albufeira. And, and yeah, we, we bought a place and, and settled now about two years ago. <laughs> so there you go, a little geography lesson on, on Portugal. Uh, so let's come back to the golden visa. So if you do want to come into Portugal, uh, there are different visa options available, but the golden visa is the one that doesn't require a minimum stay. It's the one that doesn't require you to move full time uh, and you don't need to change your tax residency. And you, like I say, you just kind of get a, a VIP pass, if you will, to move to Portugal uh, if you want. Uh, or worst case scenario, you simply get a passport in five years time to live in Europe. Now, if you want to do that with that flexibility, uh, there is an investment required and there's different types of investment that you can make to be granted the golden visa. The first one is the option to set up a business. And if you create 10 jobs as part, excuse me, as part of that business, just at a coffee shop, uh, to perk me up. Yeah, we, uh, you want to set up a business and, uh, and, and create 10 jobs, that's fine. It's probably not something that you do just to get a visa. Uh, of course, a lot of time, a lot of effort involved in setting up a business and managing that business. But if you do have a company that might want to expand into Portugal, uh, you know, the, the golden visa might be a nice add-on to that. But yeah, not necessarily something you do just to get the visa, but an option if you're that way inclined. Uh, you can make an invest, you can make a donation. If you're feeling generous, you can make a donation of 500,000 into Portugal's uh, research activities or into the national arts and culture, should you wish. Uh, we've now done over 2,000 applications as a whole, and, and we've never done one for a donation, strangely. I um, don't know why that is. I'm sure some people do do, do that, but I suppose you wouldn't come um, to uh, a company like Holborn to get advice on, on making a, a donation as such. It's, it's pretty straightforward, but it can be done if you want to do that. Uh, the main uh, application, the main number of applications account for option four or number five, uh, number four is the investment into a, an investment fund or a venture capital fund uh, for a minimum of 500,000 euros. Or you can invest into the share capital of an existing Portuguese company, again, with 500,000 euros on the basis that that company will support or create jobs as a direct result of that investment. Uh, so unless you want to, if like I say, you can set up a business, you can make a donation or you can make an investment. Uh, the ones we'll focus on tonight, of course, are, are going to be the investment options, uh, assuming that the majority of people on the call would like to keep their money uh, and don't fancy, you know, setting up a business necessarily in, in Portugal. Uh, and yeah, we'll cover, we'll cover those in a bit of detail as we go through. Uh, some up-to-date news before we do that. Uh, first of all, um, 
Yeah, this this I announced uh, a few weeks back, but uh, loads of good news this year so far. Last last year was just bad news. You know, all the rules changing um, and uh, deadlines, and uh, it was felt difficult last year. But this year has been all good news so far. And the first bit of good news was that the government, uh, about a month back or so now, reduced the costs involved in renewing the visa after two years. The cost previously was €3,900 per person, per renewal. And there's one, possibly two renewals between when you apply for the visa and you get the passport. So you can imagine for a family of four people, you know, that can be the best part of what's that, 30,000 euros potentially. Uh, but that, that's now been reduced to 84 euros per person. Um, it's pretty cool, right? Um, but that's, that's really good news, very welcome news. So anyone either looking to get involved in the program or already, already has a golden visa, uh, now has significantly less cash to have to shell out to the government when they come to renew their visas. Uh, second up, I've been dying to announce this for ages, but as of literally this week now, there has been an announcement from the Council of Ministers of Portugal that the backlog, the infamous backlog of applications for the Golden Visa uh, will be, um, what's the word, will be concluded. They will catch up. They will be eradicated. There'll be no more backlogs. Everything will be back up to speed. Uh, with the special task force that has been assigned by the Council of Ministers uh, to be concluded by the 2nd of June next year, which is great news. And uh, there'll be parties and celebrations going around uh, Portugal on that news because, yeah, the, the backlog of applications has been uh, turbulent, shall we say. It started back in what, 20, 2021, uh, when, when the type of property that you could invest into changed, uh, it crashed the CEF system, the Borders Agency system, and there was a period of three months uh, where there was no new applications that could be submitted, caused absolute chaos. People had the applications lost. They had to go back in the queue. Uh, an absolute nightmare. It kind of got better. It has been getting better. The wait time has significantly reduced since then, but still somewhat of a backlog. So to, to, to hear this is great news now, to know that everyone's going to be up to date, no more delays as of, like I say, next year is, uh, is fantastic news. So, uh, so we should see even more visas issued in 2025, which is great news. Um, and that, yeah, that's on the back as well of, again, another recent law change where the government announced that the five-year clock will now start to tick from when you uh, submit your application rather than when you receive the visa, um, which again, great news. So from the day, it takes, you know, by the time we set up your tax number and your bank accounts and, you know, you've made the necessary investment, it generally takes kind of two to three months to have everything done and to have your applications submitted. Um, and it's now from that date that your five year, like I said, the five years begins rather than when you receive the visa one or two years down the line. So again, more Welcome news, some more visas being issued 2025, and that ultimately means more passports being issued uh, much faster as well. So I can say all good news so far this year. Uh, okay, so uh, as far as investment capital that's required as of today's date, now, like I said, there's many different routes to the, to the visa program, uh, different investment opportunities, uh, and there's different ways to qualify. Uh, and as of kind of, uh, if you like, the bullet points of the current opportunities available within the country, these are kind of the, 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 the checkpoints, if you like, for the minimum capital that's required to qualify in one of those ways. Now, the good news is, uh, for those, and this, this is only something that you'd really consider if you were looking at the donation option of 250, but it is now possible to achieve full financing for the 500,000 euros uh, for the term of the investment until when you get your passport. So rather than investing 500,000 and, and making a return, you can keep the 500,000 or not have to find the 500,000 and simply pay uh, for pay the interest on that 500,000, um, for which comes to a, a fee of 168,000. Now that is a cost. And like I say, a cost of 168,000 is not as appealing as making a profit. However, like I say, for those that maybe I don't have access to the capital of the higher figures at this point compared to simply donating 250,000, which is the next checkpoint, 168,000 reduces that minimum quite significantly. 
Uh, so again, we'll come on to that more shortly. Uh, that's that's like I said, it's just that's just been that's just come about just recently. Uh, the two fifty is the next category. If you want to give that to the Portuguese government into the national arts. And as far, now coming on to the investment categories. So when we start investing money to make a profit, the minimum capital that you need as of today's date is 315,000, um, which is specific to one particular investment um, that's out there that allows for an investment of 500,000, which of course is required for the visa, but rather than an annual return, it pays an upfront return of 111,000 with an additional option of a loan. And all those, thing, all those things combined would allow you to qualify with your own capital of 315,000. Uh, the next category or next checkpoint, if you like, is 399, similar setup, but minus the loan, slightly lower return. Uh, but again, on the same theme of, of an upfront return paid from an investment, which is used towards the 500,000 K, uh, 500,000 euros, uh, reduces your investment capital to 399 and of course but then into just the normal investment category of 500,000 and above so again hope that makes sense any any questions on these feel free to like i said to drop it in anything on the on the q a we'll come back to them but hopefully that is all okay so far a uh, quick note for the americans in the room uh, this is a, a common question that i'm asked and uh, yeah with, with the i think more for political reasons in the us at the moment and for, for americans in particular uh, now choosing to use their retirement accounts as a way to fund the investment um, and yeah like i said there's something that, that i find myself hearing about a lot more um, but of course if you do what if you do withdraw from retirement accounts it may mean that you pay taxes it may mean that you pay a penalty if you're below a certain age. Uh, and there is a way of which you can use the retirement accounts to fund the investment without physically withdrawing the cash from the retirement accounts. Um, so, you know, that, of course, may save on that tax being paid at that point and any, any penalties compared to withdrawing from the retirement accounts. Uh, not something I'll go into to lots of detail, but if you do want any further information on that, of course, please do ask, and I'll be happy to put you in contact uh, with the uh, the provider uh, from the relevant advisory uh, in the US. Uh, okay, so some basics as far as who qualifies for the golden visa. So as long as you don't already have a European passport, uh, you have a pretty clean or very clean criminal record certificate. Um, you make, of course, an eligible investment, as we've covered, and you travel to Portugal for at least 14 days. That's it. Just 14 days. Horrible, horrible thing to do. But you've just got to have to, you're just going to have to force yourself to Portugal for two weeks every couple of years. And if you tick those four boxes, you will be successful for the visa. Uh, there's no other requirements. There's no, there's no uh, age restrictions or income restrictions. There's no kind of... You don't have to be skilled in a particular uh, industry. That's it. It's just those four things. If you tick those four boxes, you are good to go. Uh, and if you are good to go, you may also wish to include your family members as well. Now, the family members that can be included, first of all, is your partner. You can include your spouse, whether married or unmarried, is fine as long as you live at the same address. Uh, you can include children up to the age of 21. Um, older as well, we have done applications for children that are older than 21, but above that age, we do need to show some form of dependency on the main applicant or provide evidence that they are still within further, ed further education. But by default, if they're under 21, there's no proof of uh, dependency required. Uh, parents as well, if you want your parents to be added, um, you, the, you can add them as many as you like, depending on how many parents. I suppose you can only have so many parents in theory, but you can have both sides of the family parents on the application. Uh, if they're over 65, uh, they're automatically assumed dependent. So again, no proof is required. Uh, if they're younger than 65, again, we must prove some dependency. Or what we do in some cases is we, we change who is the main applicant to get as many family members on the same application as possible. But yeah, on, you know, on that note, uh, you can bring three generations of family across with you, should you so wish, all on the same investment. Uh, so there you go. Any questions on that? Drop them in. But I think that's pretty uh, pretty straightforward. 
Uh, okay, the process involved, bit of a busy slide, but in short, this is just everything that happens behind the scenes between when we start the process and when we get your visa. Uh, like I said, my team will facilitate the whole process uh, and everything is done remotely. Uh, it all starts with, of course, you need to confirm how you intend to invest. Um, and we'll then set up your tax numbers. We get your bank account set up in Portugal. Uh, you'll have a lawyer, uh, which we'll, we will liaise with. And then when everything is done, when we've got all your documents, we've got your criminal record certificate, we've got your marriage certificate, we have passport copies, proof of address. That's the most of it, I think. Um, and uh, there is going to there is some attestation required on some of those documents as well. Maybe some translation involved, but again, we will help you with all of that. But when everything's done, your bank account is ready. You'll need to transfer the funds then to your new Portuguese bank account. The investment is then completed, and we will then be able to submit your application to AMA. Uh, AMA is the the immigration authority, if you like, the borders agency uh, that took over for, from CEF earlier this year. Uh, and again, from the submission date, that is when the five-year clock will then start to tick for your passport. Uh, once the application is submitted, we then just wait for the biometrics appointment. And like I say, everything until that point can be done remotely. You're very welcome to come and say hello. You're very welcome to meet with, with everyone in person, um, but you don't need to. You know, we have clients all over the world, so the service is designed to work remotely and as easily as possible. However, we cannot do your fingerprints for you and we can't be there for your photo. So at that point, you will need to fly in uh, and we will accompany you on the day to try and keep you entertained on what is a very boring day, very soul-destroying day, whenever you need to go to uh, the AMA office, um, but something we need to do nonetheless. And we'll, of course, help you with the translation, more importantly, uh, whilst you're there. Uh, and shortly after we have the biometrics appointment, we will receive your visa, which looks a little bit like this card here down at the bottom. Piece of cake. That's everything. At the, at the moment, a uh, total time frame I would set at about 18 months. However, in light of that new news I mentioned before, we should see that significantly reduced now uh, as far as how long it takes to get the visa. Uh, all being well, dare I say it, you know, we could be talking now six to 12 months for the process if everything's up to date by june next year you know there has been days in the past where the whole process has taken just a few months so uh you know dare i say if we if we can get back down to those kind of processing times with aima that would be fantastic but yeah certainly you know i'd, I'd be confident in this time next year now you know expecting to receive the visa and then it's all good news from there it's all good news you can fly into portugal and spend as much time as you like you can come and see me, or maybe you've got more exciting things to do and do whatever you like. But that's when you get the visa. Now, as a quick recap, you've got not to three months, like up to three months to, to submit the visa. It'll take around 18 months to receive the visa. Two years from that point, we will then need to renew the visa card, okay, for a further two years. Um, in theory, like I said, that'll take you up to then about five, five and a half years, maybe, from when you submit the application. So there will likely be a second renewal, okay, around year five. Of course, allowing enough time to, to receive the passport as well, which we apply for in the year five. Uh, and uh, yeah, of course, don't forget that there's just a couple of things you need to do during that time. Uh, the first one is keep a clean criminal record, um, which hopefully won't be too much to ask. Uh, and the second thing is you must learn a basic level of Portuguese. Um, and, um, and yeah, two options you've got on that. Now, you can take an exam, uh, to an A2 level, and you can take an exam uh, anywhere you like. You can take it at a, a local test center, if you will. Uh, or if you don't fancy an exam, you can now take a course, um, which is my plan, really, because uh, very embarrassingly, I speak very little Portuguese, and I also need to make sure I've got that done within the next oh, two, three years. Uh, but yeah, language is not my, my thing, really. I've always struggled with Spanish. I was in Spain for five years and then like i've been in portugal for three but not great very good with numbers not very good with languages but if you don't want to take an exam now you can do a course and as long as you do a certain minimum number of hours of study that is also going to be okay to get your passport so either is fine if you don't fancy either you can just continue to renew the visa but of course to avoid having to pay for a renewal every two years you want to ideally get the permanent residency and the passport as soon as you can 
And that's it, mission accomplished, or mission complete. You then have the passport, you then have visa-free access to over 190 countries worldwide, uh, and the option to live in any European state uh, without any restrictions at all. So if you want to move your tax residency at that point to Italy or Spain, France, wherever you may fancy, all are open. It's kind of like getting 27 passports all at the same time. Um, for some of us that kind of visa free travel to 190 countries, we, we will already have certainly as a British passport holder, as an American passport holder, as, as, as most first world country passport holders, we already have the luxury of visa free travel uh, to most countries around the world. Uh, but for some nationalities, that is a luxury that doesn't come as standard. So as a, like I said, as a passport holder in the EU, that then relinquishes the need to fill out that visa paperwork every time that you want to go on a holiday as well. So there you go. So there's the golden visa. That is that is the basics of it. So thank you for your questions that are coming in so far. Um, I'm going to just run through uh, a few further slides and then we'll, we'll jump into some questions. And so some of these questions I might be able to answer as we go through. I'm going to give you a super quick crash course uh, on a course, um, you know, how to go about making investment decisions uh, because it is a wild, what's the word I'm looking for? It's like the wild, wild west sometimes in Portugal. Uh, and you need to make sure that you are choosing your investment wisely. And um, so, yeah, some, some basics, first of all, um, to help you go about the, the process of working out, you know, how to, how to invest. So first of all, the rules, you know, if you go down the investment fund route, you cannot just, you cannot invest in any fund. The fund has to meet a particular set of criteria. The first of which is that it has to be regulated by the Portuguese Securities Commission, which is the CMVM. So you cannot have a fund regulated in the US or the UK, for example, it has to be regulated in Portugal. The fund may not invest in any type of real estate as well, which was a rule brought in at the end of 2023 when property investment was removed from the criteria. The fund must invest also at least 60% of its assets into Portugal, into, into Portuguese securities as well. So for example, you couldn't have a Portuguese fund that tracks the US stock market, for example. It's gonna have at least 60% of its assets within Portugal. Uh, the investor must buy at least 500,000 euros worth of units in that fund to meet the minimum. Uh, and you must keep the investment until you no longer need the investment. Don't know if that's worded right, but basically until you have your permanent residency and your passport. You know, one of the criteria to, to be successful for the passport is that you have maintained the visa and there's not any breaks in the investment during that period. Uh, but that's it. That, they, they are the bullet points. So that's that's what you're looking for. Um, now... When you do doing your research, um, you know, be mindful. These are some real, real, real basic points. But of course, um, first and foremost, I, I always think it is it is the most important to have return of capital rather than return on capital. And certainly, when looking uh, within Portuguese investments that are out there, be make sure that you have understood how secure the investment is. Uh, and what is the chance of getting that capital back? Is there any kind of protection? Is there any kind of asset back security? Uh, and make sure that, yeah, you know, the golden visa doesn't end up costing you 500,000 euros. Um, be mindful of how long the capital is tied up for. Uh, again, there are different investment routes that, you know, will tie up the, the, the capital for longer than you need. Ideally, you know, six or seven years to give you a bit of breathing space is all that you need. You don't necessarily you might not want to be tying the money up for 10 years plus uh, with, of course, the restrictions within the, the golden visa. I'd be mindful of fees, setup fees, management fees, exit fees, performance. I've seen some performance fees as high as 50%. So, you know, be mindful of these things. Um, you know, understand how the returns are paid. Is there a track record? Are the returns... Uh, predicted or is there any any evidence are they fixed uh do they, does that have a variable return you know what's the risk rating generally of the investment i've seen some some wildly adventurous um venture capital funds out there and um, just be mindful that if it's too good to be true it probably is um so uh, 
Yeah, some basic pointers there, obviously, to help you out. And just be mindful, if you are a US citizen, that there is that extra check to be done because not all investment funds are suitable for US citizens um, because of the extra reporting required back to the US for its citizens. And not all fund managers are, are willing to do that extra reporting, which is required for your tax return uh, back in the States. So uh, all in all, yeah, just have, just be mindful, like I said, just be mindful of, of what you're getting involved with. Um, as a quick snapshot as to the, the kind of current fund directory uh, within Portugal, there's around about 25 to 30 funds in total to choose from. Um, the, like I said, they all vary in shapes and size and returns and risk and industries and sectors and currencies and so forth. Um, but as to give you some boundaries as to, like I said, the current fund director at the moment, there are funds that, that are low risk funds, medium and high risk funds, time periods, anything from no time period at all, uh, up to 14 years as maximum. Uh, there are funds with setup fees or subscription fees from, from zero to up to 3%. Uh, management fees, which is an annual fee from anything from zero to 3% per year. Uh, for investment funds that have that are performance based, that are um, that don't have a, a set return, that are, literally will pay a return based on on the success of the fund, uh, target up to as high as fifteen percent, uh, but of course in no way offer a guarantee of either the capital or the return. But again, depending on risk appetite, there are funds to choose from that could target quite exciting returns. Um, fixed returns, okay, there are invest, there are funds with a fixed return of 4% per year uh, that can be paid up front as well for a period of time. Uh, that dates back to one of the slides earlier where we talked about the minimum investment capital of 315000 or 399000 Um Again, there are asset-backed investment funds. There are non-asset-backed investment funds. As we talked about, minimum investor capital is 315 as, as of today's day, and full financing is available for a cost of 168,000. Uh, and of course, as a part of our service, we will be happy to introduce you to reputable fund managers uh, within the industry to help you uh, with the fund selection. But that's just a quick crash course on, on what is out there right now. As far as the sectors, yeah, I mean, you can, you can invest in anything you like, really, as far as Portugal is concerned. Uh, these are some of the main industries, I mean, sectors of interest. Uh, my, my, my preferences towards really tourism and, and hospitality, where often you can find the most uh, incentives. But if you have a more, um, like I say, more specific interest, whether it be into Portuguese wine or the automotive industry, Here's a question for anyone. Let's see if anyone knows of any Portuguese car manufacturers. I, I can't think. I love I love cars, but I don't know if there are any Portuguese car manufacturers. Might be parts manufacturers, but uh, but nonetheless, you can invest into automotive investment funds, uh, renewable energy, biotech. Um, so yeah, just remember. Of course, you just got to make sure you remember those points and uh, make sure it meets the criteria for the visa. Uh, like I say, investing into hospitality, one in particular is the option to have an upfront return. Uh, so rather than being at the risk or performance of an investment, you can have uh, the kind of peace of mind, if you like, of knowing exactly what's going to be paid, uh, which can be done as much as 101,000 euros, um, which would require the, the investor capital to be just 399. Um, I said that within hospitality is, is currently that option as well for a further loan. Um, and if you take the loan of 74,000, the return is increased to 111,000, reducing your investor capital needed to just three, excuse me, 315. Uh, there's a guaranteed exit from year six as well of 500,000. So very, very simple, 399 goes in, 500,000 comes back out. Uh, there, there is an asset backed security as well. So you're not just dependent on the performance of the investment, but you have a tangible asset held as further security. Uh, and yeah, within hospitality, you can also find that you will have a, the cost of accommodation paid for complimentary for your minimum stay each year as well, which is not something that you would maybe 
uh, choose an investment based on solely by itself, but it's a nice add-on to actually have, you know, accommodation uh, paid for, uh, you know, as part of the uh, the investment. Uh, so yeah, hospitality this is a good one. Hospitality is one of the most profitable sectors. It's, it's one of the largest sectors of the GDP for Portugal as well. But that's just one one example uh, within hospitality. The financing option, like I said, this is really only something that you would look at if you're considering the donation. Uh, it is, of course, a sunk cost of 168,000 euros, uh, which is not as attractive as making a profit of 101,000 euros. Um, however, for those that want to do it with minimum capital, uh, you can do it with 168,000. Uh, the lender then invests 500,000 on your behalf. Uh, you have no investment exposure whatsoever. So there's no, there's no investment risk uh, at all. You're simply paying the upfront interest for the lender to assume the investment risk. And the lender also gets the benefit of the investment over that time as well, which is their incentive. Um, but yeah, it's a great way for those looking to minimize capital. Of course, if you have investments generating 10, 15% per year at the moment, it might actually make sense to do that rather than pull money out of other investments for 500,000, you know, to go into, into another fund, for example. Um, but there you go, that's the financing. Uh, so it's new, new, hot of the press. It can be done at the moment. Um, but for any questions, yeah. I hope that that's helpful. Um, I like to think I'm an expert in the field. I've done now touching on 200 applications for the Golden Visa now since um, since just the beginning of last year. So yeah, I've seen it all, all the wild and wacky uh, questions and investment uh, options and so forth. I am a fully qualified financial planner as well. So any help you need with regard to, like I say, financially preparing for Portugal, getting your tax affairs in order, structuring your assets and understanding yeah, what to do before you move. You can ask, uh, like I say, check me out on Gold, on, on Gold, on Trustpilot as well. And uh, and yeah, feel free to ask any questions um, either on a one-to-one -one basis or in our live Q&A that we're going to get stuck into now. But hopefully that was helpful. Uh, we're not done too bad for time. We've covered everything that you need to know about Portugal's uh, golden visa there uh, but for any any personal assistance any particular questions obviously personalized cost breakdowns understanding of things like legal costs and government fees uh, details on anything that i've covered within the webinar this evening you can scan the qr code um, to to book in some time uh, you can have uh, a complimentary discussion i won't charge you for a one-to-one -one, uh, discussion we can talk into a little bit more detail uh, of course you can get in contact by email also with any questions and uh, yeah i hope that was that was helpful for everyone all right so let's get stuck into some questions let's see what we've not covered so uh hi there russian era how to qualify for the visa option without the final exam um i assume russian era, you might be referring there to the language exam uh, and if so, yeah, you have the option now to do a test, an exam, or you can simply do a minimum number of hours study as well um, as an alternative. So yeah, there you go. You don't. That's that's it. There's no there's no final exam as such for the passport. Um, as long as you've maintained the visa, you've you've kept a clean criminal record, um, and you've maintained the investment you will be good to go. There is a 97% success rate from visa to passport in Portugal, the 3% not, of course, either continuing with their investment for the time needed or perhaps getting in trouble with the law. Uh, who knows? But in the main, just stick to those rules, follow my guidance, and all will be okay. Um, thank you for your question, Roshnara. Uh, hi there, Alec. I have the following questions. Do startups in Portugal work the same as in the USA? Preferred ISO, seat on the board, advisor position. Uh, well, I like without going into business advice, uh, I will cover off the fact that the rules for the golden visa, if you wish to set up a business, is relatively straightforward. Um, but the main caveat is that at least 10 members of staff need to be employed uh, you know, if you wish to qualify for the visa uh, as a byproduct of setting up a business. Uh, other than that, Oleg, uh, if you want general advice on setting up a business in Portugal, you know, we can set up maybe a meeting with uh, one of our lawyers and they can talk you through what's required uh, to do that.
Um, okay, so hi there, Alec. Yeah, to clarify, I'm interested in the co-investor route. Uh, not too sure what you mean there, Alec. Yeah, I can, if you're thinking of maybe setting up a business, perhaps with a with a business partner, um, then yeah, like I said, as long as you follow that criteria, you'll be good to go. Uh, hello there, Anonymous. Both my granddads have Portuguese birth certificates as they were born in Goa. Would that help the visa process? Um, well, you probably find you don't need a visa uh, in that example. If they have Portuguese birth certificates, there may be a way, if not already, we can, we can apply for a Portuguese passport. And therefore, you can bypass the visa process. Um, but yeah, I'd say maybe on that note, if you want to drop me an email with some more, more details, and I'll, uh, I'll be happy to guide you on that front. If we do, if we do need the visa, um, then the birth certificates probably won't make much difference. No, we'll still need to maintain the uh, the normal process and the steps required. Uh, okay, could you explain the one six eight? Yes, yeah, so I think we covered that off uh, earlier, just on the on the last slide. Again, any questions on on the financing route with one hundred and sixty eight thousand? Uh, booking some time. You've got my let's say scan the QR code on the code. Drop me an email. Uh, happy to go through that, and I can send over to you know more more information, uh, more detailed information uh, on that, as well as any other routes that you wish to go down. Um, I had heard that there was a category for entry specifically tailored for retirees that was guaranteed income based. For example, I received a US government pension, which I thought might be sufficient. Is there such a process or am I misunderstand misunderstanding this as an option? Um, you may be referring to one of the other visa routes. Um, the, yeah, the golden visa doesn't have any income requirements. Um, but of course, with the residency visas, if you're looking for a full-time visa where you live in Portugal um, full-time and you become tax resident, then there are other visa routes that do have, uh, that are based on your income. And if you have a guaranteed income, of course, that may assist with the application. Uh, but not for the golden visa, potentially for one of the residency visas. Hi there, Hakan. Uh, can you please elaborate more on the course option instead of the exam, which company? Um, the minimum hours, you need to do a minimum of 150 hours. I don't have the company off the top of my head, but, um, but yeah, of course, I'll find out for you. If, if you want to book a one-to-one -one meeting, you know, when we start the process, happy to help you with that. And uh, I'll dig out the company uh, on that route, no problem. Hi there, Oleg. Uh, can you please elaborate on the 401k IRA options for US citizens? Um, well, in short, Oleg, um, the yeah, the option is well, I can't I can't give you too much kind of info on this on this topic because it's not a service that we provide. It is done by a US attorney, which of course will be happy to 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 introduce you to with your permission. Uh, but in short, you know, you, you're able to structure your assets in the US. So that for U.S. tax purposes, the investment money remains within your retirement account. Um, but yeah, with a qualifying investment fund, it is possible to keep everything within your retirement account uh, so that you don't have to pay the withdrawal taxes or any potential penalties for uh, withdrawing early. Uh, so I'd say I'll look on that, on that note, but yeah, book some time in and um, yeah, we'll, we'll talk through it and um, we, we can make that introduction for you as, as, as part of the service, no problem. Uh, oh, hello. Do the Azores Islands count towards the two-week consecutive stay in the country? Yes, that's fine. Anywhere in Portugal, no problem. Pick, take your pick. You can have one week in the Azores and one week on the mainland. Um, are most jobs, corporate jobs, English or Portuguese speaking? Um, well, on a whole, Portugal is an English speaking country. Um, so you'll find it hard, unless you go inland to Portugal, you'll find that the vast majority of Portuguese citizens do speak English, and normally pretty well. Um, they actually they actually teach English in school. So that, so it's I believe now for a good friend of mine actually her her daughter um, is is actually she's English but she's studying at a Portuguese or an international school, and apparently it's pretty cool for the kids to speak English. If you can speak English, you're kind of in the cool club now. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's very, very much welcome from a young age. And uh, and yeah, most Portuguese speak English. As far as the, the jobs, yeah, it's um, 
I think Portuguese would be an advantage, but you know, as compared to most countries, you'll find you'll be doing okay. Look at me. I don't speak a word of English. Well, I speak literally one word, maybe two words I can think of. Uh, and I've been in Portugal now for, for quite some time. But I'm just a bad example. I feel quite embarrassed about that. And uh, nonetheless, you'll be okay. As long as you, of course, you've got to pass Portuguese anyway, whether you like it or not, if you plan to, uh, if you plan to get the passport. Um, hi there, Mark. So do I understand correctly that if I come up with 315,000 euros and borrow 74,000 euros, I get back 101,000 euros right away. And I also get how much again when the fund allows to withdraw? Uh, yes, that is all correct, Mark. So the so you have a few options. The 101 is paid up front. So if you wish, you can have the 101 paid to you before um, the in the main the, you know the full investment. So it can actually contribute towards the 500,000. It's actually transferred to your Portuguese bank account right up front. Um, or you can invest the full 500,000 and have the 101 reimbursed around four weeks, four, four to six weeks later. Um, so that's right. The loan, yeah, the loan is paid 74,000 euros. That's paid up front as well into your Portuguese bank account. And from year six, you have a guaranteed exit of 500,000. If you do take the loan option, then you have two options on the loan option. You can either repay the loan over a period of three years, um, and the interest rate on that loan is 5% per year. Um, remember as well that you get 111,000 instead of 101,000 if you take the loan. And or the other option is you don't pay the loan back. You can actually just repay that after, you know, when, when you exit the investment in year six, uh, and that, it, that comes off the repayment amount as well as the interest. But the interest for that is 10% per year. So more often than not, it makes sense to, yeah, if you do the, it makes sense to do the loan, but repay that over three years. And then, yeah, you get a, you get an extra return and you get a lower interest rate as well. Uh, but yep, that's all correct, Mark. That is all correct. Uh, there's also no fees on that one, just we're on the topic. There's no, there's no setup fees. There's no management fees. There's no exit fees. Uh, there's no time period. Um, but of course, yeah, you want to make sure that you keep the investment so it doesn't um, affect your visa application along the way. But yeah, that's all correct, Mark. Hold on, but any, any other questions on that, obviously, uh, feel free to ask. Um, okay, super. We're doing well for time. So I'm just going to go through some questions that were submitted before the webinar, and then we'll finish off in, in a few moments. So yeah, for any, any last questions, feel free to drop them in the Q&A. Um, okay, so what do we have? Hi there, Wendy. Is it possible to invest in a small farm? to own or run myself in Portugal? Um, on, well, it, it is possible, but not as a way to get the visa, Wendy. So if you in, so you can buy a farm, you can in, invest in a farm. I mean, in theory, if you invested 500,000 into a farming country, sorry, farming company, that would potentially work as long as, again, there was a certain number of jobs created. Um, but buying a farm would be a form of buying a property or a commercial premise which uh, wouldn't qualify for the visa, but you can do it. You know, just because it doesn't qualify doesn't mean you can't do it. As long as, uh, let's say, you have a, another investment that does qualify to make sure you've got the permission to stay in the farm for longer than three months. Um, okay, so hi there, Lorena. Um, what are the requirements to move to Portugal from the United States? Um, so yeah, as, as we've covered off in, in this evening, yeah, so you just need to get a visa. Lorena, and uh, follow the guidelines. And there's no exclusions for Americans. So it's the same rules for all nationalities and Russia as well. On that note, Russia has now been, uh, uh, applications are, are now applicable for Russians as well, if any Russians are in the room. Um, okay, so what else we got? Are the language classes online? Hi there, Kerry. How many hours? When? So yes, the language lessons need to be done within a controlled environment i think it is possible online um but yes you can do them at any point you can pass the test at any any time during the visa period or you can study the minimum number of hours in the portuguese course instead 
Um, Marty, hi there, Marty. What are the tax implications of the visas? Okay, I'll cover this one off because this is a, a common question that comes up. So just to clarify, the, the visa, no matter what visa that you go for, having a visa does not change your tax residency. Um, and unlike, for example, in the US, where you know the US taxes its citizens, Portugal only taxes its residents. So regardless of what visa that you have, and regardless of if you have a passport or not, you will only pay tax in Portugal if you physically spend over six months of the year in Portugal, or on any income that you derive from within Portugal, like a rental income, for example. But just by, by having a golden visa or a silver visa or a bronze visa or a passport, that does not change your tax residency. Only when you physically move to the country would anything change on the tax front. Um, so yeah, I hope that makes sense. So hi there, Stevie. Will you address the self-directed IRA again? Yes, we've we've covered that off. Any any questions, like I said, regarding the uh, the IRA routes? Uh, get in contact, book some time in, and um, happy to to make that introduction for you. Um, okay, what else do we have there? Uh, okay, questions on the three one five. Hi there, Barang. How? Is 315,000. How does it work? Yep, so we've covered that off. Hi there, Ashraf. I want to see my Portugal dream and complete this with my family. <laughs> Super, Ashraf. Well, hopefully I've helped you um, start that dream to Portugal. Uh, okay, super. So I think we've come up to a close. So hi there, man. So once you have a passport, how much, how, much, how often do you need to renew? And how does Holborn help with that? Uh, someone's when you have a passport, you don't need to renew the passport. Um, well, technically, you need to renew it after 10 years, but you don't need anyone's help for that. It's just a case of sending off your old passport and getting a new one. Uh, but once you once once you get the permanent residency after the five years and the passport, that is it's exactly that. It's a permanent residency and a permanent passport. Uh, so you don't need us from that point. You've you've got everything that you need. Of course, we'll be on hand for you know things, you know, questions around um, you know changing your tax residency and helping you manage your income and your assets uh, as as part of an ongoing service, perhaps uh, after the passport is issued. You know, I, I'll be here for a long time. I'm certainly not going anywhere. I've committed to Portugal now. I've bought a property, and um, and yeah, of course, I, I live here. I'm the, the top golden visa consultant now in the country. I'm very proud to say, and uh, I will be on hand as well to, to continue to look after you, um, you know, throughout your time in Portugal. I'm not planning on retiring anytime soon. So, uh, yeah, maybe when I'm older and greyer or slightly bolder, I'll be, uh, I'll move on. But for now, we'll be looking after your man's throughout the process. Uh, hi, there, Olga. Hope you're well. Uh, nice to see you. Um, which option has taken more attention among the applicants so far to get residency and the passport eventually uh, well um i would say the majority of people that i speak to i got uh, well they are thinking of retirement um maybe like i said either coming into retirement or having retired it's very rare that somebody says to me i would like to uh, i'd like to invest into something that's really adventurous uh, most most clients find the thought of transferring 500,000 euros to a foreign country um, stressful enough. Uh, so more often than not, it's it's the ones uh, I find clients going for investments that have the most security, not necessarily the biggest returns, but the ones that have the most security, things that have a fixed return, have a guarantee of capital, that have you know asset backed security. Um, because yeah, it can be stressful moving country enough without having to worry about losing loads of money and a bad investment as well. So uh, hopefully that answers your question. Um, hi there, Mark. Sorry, a tax question to follow on. If we get residency and spend more than six months in country, do we have to pay Portugal taxes? Do we still pay US taxes? Um, so Mark, yeah, if you do spend more than six months in Portugal, um, the you will automatically become tax resident. And you will start to pay tax on your worldwide income in Portugal. Um, the 
there is a tax treaty between Portugal and the US. You, you won't be double taxed, but you may pay tax in both countries. It depends on the type of income and where it comes from and what the tax rates in the two countries are on that type of income. Um, but yes, you, you won't pay double tax. So don't don't panic. Um, but you might like I say you might pay tax in both countries up to the highest tax percentage between the two, if that makes sense. Uh, so, yeah, it's just a, obviously with, with the removal of the NHR program last year, there's not as many tax incentives now for Portugal. So more, I'd say more clients here are, are not necessarily wanting to change the tax residency any longer. They're thinking of just getting the passport. Um, so, uh, but yeah, we, you know, we can do a comparison. We can look at the situation as a Portuguese tax resident. Uh, you know, we can we can bring in a, port, a, a US tax expert as well to compare and then we can help guide you. On what to expect. Also, I can send you a tax guide as well, Mark, which which might be helpful if you if you drop me an email just as a reminder. I, I can send across a tax guide for you as well, um, which will help on some of those points. Uh, can you share a copy of this presentation with the attendees? Yes, I can, and I will do one better. Um, it will be uploaded onto YouTube in the near future. Um, everything will need to be uh, run through our compliance team first of all, just to make sure I've not said anything that I shouldn't do. Um, but um, having done the presentation quite a few times now, that should be up relatively quickly. I'd hopefully, you know, by the end of this week, early next week, I'll be sure to send a recording out to everyone. Uh, in the meantime, if you have any questions, yeah, don't feel free, don't feel, don't hesitate to ask and, uh, and book some time in to cover off any of the topics. Um, Heather Phyllis, uh, we applied for the golden visa at the end of 2021. Uh, we have done biometrics, but do not yet have the residency cards. Is there a possibility of this time spent waiting going towards our residency requirement? Um, time spent. So time spent, um, the time spent in the country, if you've had time in the country, Phyllis, after the date of your submission, yes, that's good news. And also the five-year clock will also um, likely have started from your application date. So although there might be a delay with your visa card, be pleased to know that it won't affect the time that you've got to apply for your passport. Um, so, yeah, good news, I think, on that front. Hopefully that, that helps. Um, but thank you, everyone, for your questions. We've got there to, to six o'clock here in Portugal. And uh, I'll thank you for, for joining. And uh, I'll be sure to, like I said, send out a copy of the recording once uploaded next week. Um, for any questions, feel free to get in touch. Uh, I'll keep everyone up to date with, obviously, my latest news. Uh, I generally try to send out an update once a month. I do a monthly webinar as well, similar to this, uh, in between uh, other, other local events. Um, but, yeah, thank you, everyone, for joining. I uh, hope that was helpful, and uh, I will look forward to seeing everyone when I'm a, a married man this time next month, uh, perhaps in the next webinar or when I see you in, in Portugal. Thank you much. Thanks, everyone. Bye now.